The L925-16 is a rechargeable lithium-ion battery pack made especially for drag racing. It's a 16-volt, 11-amp-hour battery that weighs only 6 pounds. It contains lithium-ion phosphate cells using licensed uh, Fostec powder and a patented MOSFET protection system. The result is a safe, lightweight racing battery. Now, who's this made for? Well, 16 volts is commonly used in drag racing today. Many people are using a specially made AGM lead acid battery for this purpose, and Excess Power is one of the manufacturers that supplies that. This product is intended to replace those in vehicles where weight is critical. So vehicles where persons are already using carbon fiber body panels or titanium fasteners should have already upgraded to a lightweight lithium ion battery. Now how is this battery different? Well, there are other lightweight batteries out on the market for drag racing. The excess power battery is unique in that the MOSFET protection system is totally solid state. Uh, it's keeping the lithium ion cells at a sweet spot where they need to be operated in, keeping them from voltage extremes, either high voltage or low voltage. And that MOSFET protection system is unique to excess power. How do you use it? Well, the battery itself is uh, very simple to use. I mean, it has two posts on it, no switches, buttons, or anything like that. You connect battery positive to the plus terminal. You connect battery negative to the ground of the vehicle and use it like you would a, a typical battery. This uh, pack can be mounted in any position, uh, including upside down, and it's extremely vibration resistant. All the protection systems are fully automatic and they operate in the background. Uh, the protection system is looking for extreme conditions like low voltage, high voltage, uh, short circuit conditions, overcurrent, and high temperature conditions. And those protections automatically reset uh, when those fault conditions go away. Now how will it perform? Well, if you've been running an excess power uh, S1000 or a competitor's 32 pound 16 volt AGM battery, you should notice very little difference. The engine should start just as fast, if not faster, and the voltage at the end of the pass should be the same. There is more than enough capacity in this battery to run any kind of car, including five-stage nitrous pro mod cars, all the way down the track. The amount of time that one battery can run uh, the fans and water pump after the pass depends on, on the application, which usually is about five to 10 minutes. Well, people wonder, well, how will this perform? Well, here we see on our screen with our fire, Digitron firing circuits tester the results of a typical ProMod pass. And we see here the cranking condition. We can add the uh, current to this. So here's the current curve. We have a, a very steep uh, current demands up to 750 amps while we're cranking. But then as we stage the car and then uh, do the burnout and put it through the water box, we can see that when we get to the time we're doing the pass, we're pulling almost 190 amps. At 190 amps, our battery is only dropping to 14.58 volts. Of course, if your car doesn't pull 190 amps, the voltage drop will be substantially less. But each battery that we build goes through a simulation like this, matter of fact, many times, uh, to make sure that we have the highest quality and the battery meets your needs. What about setting the clutch or maybe lashing the valves in the engine? Well, you can certainly do that with this battery, but keep in mind the MOSFET protection system is looking for overcurrent conditions. So if you bump the engine too quickly, it may see that as an overcurrent and in temporarily interrupt uh, the output from the battery. Keep in mind that resets in 10 seconds and you know to uh, bump the engine a little slower. Now, we recommend actually an auxiliary battery in the pit area, something like uh, our S1000 or, or the D1000, whatever you may have on hand, actually to, to do all those pit procedures of lashing the valve, setting the clutch with a secondary battery so that you're always ensured to have a full lithium battery when you go to the line. How do you charge it? Well, you must use a lithium compatible battery charger. Lead acid battery chargers will not work, especially if the lithium battery is at a low state of charge. Uh, the two chemistries are radically different in how they need to be handled, and therefore, lead acid chargers should never be used. The lithium battery is a, needs to be charged at a low rate when it's at deeply discharged, and that's very different than a lead acid battery. So for that reason, we recommend 
that you use the XS Power part number 1008 only with this battery. So the charger is real easy to use. You just connect the battery. Uh, in this case, we're connected on a lab table. Of course, you may have different types of connectors on the car. But we connect the battery first, then we flip the charger on. And you'll notice that the charger is uh, making measurements on the battery. In this case, this battery is almost full. So it shows 18.4 volts. And it's flashing, showing that it's charging. The, or the indicator light here is orange, meaning it's actively charging. Red light, meaning that it's, uh, the power is properly applied and it's uh, properly charging. But in just a moment, it will flip over to end, and the light will turn green. That shows that it's at the end of charge. The battery is full and ready to use. Should we want to in, uh, reinitialize this and uh, start another charge cycle, we do have to turn the, turn the charger off and repeat the sequence. Reconnect it and turn it back on to start another charge cycle. How do you maintain it? Well, the MOSFET protection system does consume current. Uh, it consumes about three milliamps of current to provide all these protections. And for that reason, the battery does need to be recharged every 45 to 60 days or so. You can also check out 4xspower.com and look at the optional float chargers uh, for lithium, that are lithium compatible. Now some cautions to keep in mind. Lithium batteries, especially the L92516, should not be installed in environments above 120 degrees Fahrenheit. The MOSFET protection system will shut the battery down when the internal temperature of the battery reaches 185 degrees and it will automatically reset when the battery cools to 176. So that in mind, it's not made for high temperature environments. Do not short the terminals together. Uh, the MOSFET protection system will see that as a short circuit and it will shut the battery down in 500 milliseconds. But still, it's just a fundamentally bad idea to short the terminals of any battery. Do not use a charging system other than the excess power part number 1008 with this part number L925-16. Do not use this battery with an alternator. Uh, stay con uh, connected to the 4xspower.com website to see the release of the new L925-16A, which will be alternator compatible. And last but not least, please recycle the L925-16 when you're finished with it in according with local law. Other than that, all you have to do is get used to the idea of having a six pound battery that provides all the electrical energy needs of your car. And after you get over that, then you can install it, bolt it in, and have fun at the track. Let us know what you think by offering your comments on our website, 4xxpower.com.